Good day to all. Welcome to Straight Talk with Greg Middleton. My name is Alexandra. With this introduction, here is Greg. Hello, everyone. Welcome to Straight Talk. Today, I have a very exciting guest. He's actually a personal friend of mine. So I told him we were not going to script our message. We we're just going to talk. So today, I have Anthony McFarlane. Welcome to Straight Talk. Well, it's a blessing to be with you, brother. Traditionally, I start off when I interview my pastors. I wanted to relax and just get to know you, the man, first, and then we have agreed to do a second segment, get to know a man of God. So we're going to talk man in this one, if okay. you don't mind. Tell me a little about you. Traditionally, we like to read a long resume. you sitting right here, so i got to read anything. Okay, do you want to open up with prayer? Or? Please, thank okay. you for reminding me <laughs> All right. All right. Father, we just thank you and praise you uh, for this show that you have blessed Brother Greg to produce, mm -hmm. to reach the community and reach the nation at large. I thank you, Lord, that your hand is on the staff, the thank production you, team. You're right here on this set with us and that this is a divine appointment mm. for there to be a divine release, a prophetic word, uh, a real relatable word that will go forth, that will touch people's heart, that will inspire some people, encourage others, and build them up in their faith and in their purpose and their assignment. So we thank you for being present, and we thank you for a wonderful production today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen, amen, amen. And, and I'm, I'm glad you reminded me. See, I'm, I'll be 73 soon. <laughs> and these things don't tick it the way they used to. You know, I used to hey, remember okay. something. <laughs> you get a pass. Okay, thank you, thank you. Yeah. And I need to tell the audience that uh, this man baptized me. You said about 30 years ago? It York? was uh, 20, about 21, 22 years 22 ago. 22 years ago. The first time I ever been dipped in water, he did it. <laughs> I, I, I came to him, I said, look, uh, I don't think I've been baptized. He said, well, come on over. I'll do it right away. And the next Sunday, I was right there in the pit. That's right. Baptized me. That's he right. He said, now you go through my classes, you know, but now yeah. you know. But I was so hungry for God. I was coming. In fact, another little tidbit, we go back to the entertainment business. That's right. Way before I started. Way before. Ministry. In fact, I was so <laughs> amazed to see Anthony McFarlane, pastor, because he was on stage dancing and singing and right. all this stuff. Ten years prior, right. Yeah, with the gospel truth. <clears throat> with the gospel truth, we Jennifer went Holiday. Out on the road. Goodman. Bookman. Yeah, Jennifer Holiday. Yep. Wow. <laughs> mm -hmm. So you can see I didn't have to write a script for you. Right, yeah. But we let's go history. back now. Let's go back now and give them some juicy stuff. Okay. <laughs> let's, now let's start with the light stuff. Okay. Where were you born? Where are you from? I was born in Texas. Oh. Sherman, Texas on Air Force Base. Oh. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a military kid. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> yeah, I was born in Texas and, man, spent about two years there. Mm -hmm. You know, my father was in the Air Force. Mm -hmm. And um, I think at that point in time we went, uh, they went back to their hometown, which right. was Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Then from Minnesota, they came to California. Mm -hmm. And, um, yeah. Was anybody in ministry in your family? Nobody was in ministry in my family. Uh, yeah. Th wow. This was not on the radar. Right, right, <coughs> right. Yeah. We're going to get to that a little bit <laughs> later, too. So how many uh, siblings do you have? Were you the only child? Or? Um, I have a brother, a okay. younger brother, okay. and he lives up north. Mm -hmm. And uh, his name is Greg. Mm -hmm. And uh, so it was just he and I. Right. Yeah. Was he uh, surprised to see you get into ministry? No, actually, he wasn't. A right. lot of my family okay. was not shocked. Ah. <clears throat> they were happy. A lot of my family, as well as close friends, Very good. Uh, they they weren't shocked. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and I was like, why would you, why aren't you shocked? You right, know, right. <clears throat> well, you know, there was, you know, God's always had His hand on my life. Right, right, right. And um, you know, I was always that kid that was a happy kid. Mm -hmm. I was very joyous. Uh, loved to laugh. Mm -hmm. um, wanted everybody to mm -hmm. uh, be kind and love one another, didn't want any friction, right. confusion. I didn't like violence mm -hmm. and fighting. Right. I would actually, I was not a fighter. Right. <clears throat> uh, Did you grow up in the, in, in, the, in the rural area or in the more urban kind of setting as a kid? Um, I grew up, wow, good question. Mm -hmm. um, 
Urban setting. Okay. Yeah, no rural setting. <laughs> so were there any gang-like stuff or devious activity around you, or did you have a pretty... When I was here, okay, when I was here initially in California as mm -hmm. a kid, mm -hmm. I, I heard of it, mm -hmm. you know, as a kid. I, I saw it as a result of we had a, a cousin, my cousin, big cousin Ed. <clears throat> he had, uh, he, his, his mother, his parents sent him down uh, to California for kind of my mother and my right, grandmother right. to deal with him because right. my mother was a, a strong woman mm -hmm. and they had a special connection and, yeah. and um, he was coming from school mm -hmm. and he had this suede purple leather jacket and um, some gang bangers that's when I kind of learned about this gang California, bangers right? in here in California okay. uh, tried to take his jacket <clears throat> And he fought for his jacket, wow. and I mean, they. I mean, he would. He was in a fight with like four or five guys, wow. and I mean, and, and they hit him in the head with something. His head was out here like this, and they didn't take his jacket. Uh, he but they almost killed. Jacket. He defended that jacket, but uh, they right. almost killed him. So that was my first awareness mm -hmm. of gangs. Mm -hmm. I bet you thought the world was a, a, a happy place before. I thought it was a happy place. You know, like you, McDonald's, you the Golden happy. Arch. Yeah, yeah. Right. How old were you when you came to the California area? Do you remember? Pro probably about four years old. Mm -hmm. yeah, so you have very old. little remembrance of Texas then, huh? Yeah, no, I, I, didn't, I didn't live in Texas. Right, right. Yeah, I didn't live in Texas. Right. I mm -hmm. was born in Texas. In the military. In the military. I and see. that's a whole other thing. I mean, you can be in any state, any city. But if you're in the military right. and you're on a military base, right. that's a whole nother world. Did y'all travel much as a family <coughs> from um, deployment to deployment? Or how did yeah, that no, no. My father took his uh, last deployment in California, transitioned out of the military. Mm -hmm. And uh, because he was, uh, he was a, a artist and he had certain skill sets, um, you know, he started writing for a magazine, <clears throat> doing work for a magazine, and then, you know, ultimately he would get on with Northrop, mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, uh, you know, he became a director and that sort of marketing, mm -hmm. director of marketing. When you were growing up, uh, what did you want to be, or what were you focusing upon? Were you into entertainment or anything? I was like in that? entertainment. Okay. Man, my mother encouraged oh. uh, me to sing and to dance. Right, and, right. And, you know, that was my, man, that was my thing. So, right. you know, I grew up with that desire to sing. Did you pursue it professionally? Uh, I pursued Because you were in the, in the play well, with I me. Was, I was in Gospel Truth right, with you, you. yeah. Truth. So we went on tour. Right. So, right. yeah, I pursued it professionally. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, I, I had a, I had some great little, right, you know, right, achievements. Right, right, uh, right. I was a regular uh, stand-in on Cagney and Lacey. Oh wow! Um, I got, uh, uh, I got uh, Taff Harley with Hunter. Right. You remember the movie yeah, Hunter? Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Stephen Cannell took a liking to me. Right. <clears throat> and uh, I played, <laughs> out of all things, I played. Uh, a, a gangbanger, a street kid, wow. and a dancer. Wow. And so I had a scene with Hunter, uh -huh. and, you know, he's looking for somebody, and, you know, he engages me on the streets. Right. And, and so uh, that's, how I, that's how I got my, my, uh, my sag. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. from there I so did... So you're a professional dancer. Yeah, I did, you know, did HBO uh, movie, did some soundtracks because I could sing. Right. You know, it was interesting back then because if you were an actor and then they mm -hmm. found out you could sing and you right. could dance, then they kind of use you okay. however they they would, yeah. you know, could use you. Mm -hmm. And I, I did some modeling. Mm -hmm. uh, I got my first professional contract with uh, Vidal Sassoon. I was the first black wow. hair model. Right. <laughs> it's, it's gone now, it, you know, it's gone now, but I had waves for days back then and, uh, you know, did, did uh, some uh, modeling back then for like J.C. Penney's mm -hmm. and things like that, you know. Right. Uh, so, you know, I had a few little accomplishments in the entertainment industry. You know, as I look back, in fact, I, I look back over my life and like I said, when you look back, it's 2020 because you see what God was doing. Yeah. But when we were going forward, we had no clue about yeah. what God was doing. No. I mean, I, I, I really love God even more because I see his hand on me so early when yeah. I was totally unaware that yes. he was there. You know? yes. So did you have that experience of he must have been there because otherwise I wouldn't have been here? Yeah, I mean, 
you hear people say, when I look back uh -huh. over my life, right, right. Um, I can see the hand of God on my mm -hmm. life. Um, at, I think, 11, 12 years old, okay. um, my mother, well, my parents divorced when I was about uh, maybe seven years old. Mm. And then my mother, three years later, mm -hmm. four years later, uh, would meet someone. And mm -hmm. when I turned 12, we were about to graduate from sixth grade, mm -hmm. <clears throat> we moved to Mississippi. So I was actually raised in Jackson, Mississippi. Wow. And I'm saying that to say that my first year there, living there, uh, I was at a skating ring. I fell, this boy pushed me. Mm -hmm. I fell, hit my head, and that week, I would start having seizures. Wow. And um, my big mama, mm -hmm. who I was telling you about, who's Grandma. 101, Whoa. Uh, as of last week, okay. um, she, we were Catholic. Mm -hmm. We were we were Catholic. Okay. So she introduced us to Christ in a different way oh, okay. through the it's Church different. of God in Christ. Yeah, yeah. <coughs> and so that's when I I got saved. Right. I was an altar boy. Right. As a Catholic. Mm -hmm. But I, I experienced salvation totally different within right, the of course. within the Black Church. Right. Right. And uh, speaking in tongues, a whole nine right. shot, tearing yeah. for the yeah. Lord, all yeah. that. Uh -huh. <coughs> and. That was the seed of faith that right. was planted in me as a result of the call of God that right. was on me that I did not know, I was right. totally unaware of. You didn't know what it was. I didn't know what it was. Uh -huh. But back to the seizures, I knew this. Uh, and uh, I would ultimately fly back and forth to UCLA because right. my father lived here in California. Mm -hmm. uh, and he had a better medical insurance, right. uh, him and his wife, for me to... Um, uh, getting a special uh, uh, mm -hmm. uh, program Testing. at UCLA to, yeah. to get tested mm -hmm. uh, with uh, uh, grandma seizures. Mm -hmm. And grandma I seizures, knew. Is that the name of the yes. syndrome you had? Okay. Yes. And I knew that one day God would heal me. Mm. You had faith even then, huh? I had faith. It's just didn't, know, blind didn't know no faith. scriptures. Blind faith. Just, I'm Come on. That's going to happen. Come on. Didn't know any scriptures. Well, check this out. You have to believe almost before it happens. Yes. Because if you don't believe, come on, it don't happen. Yes. But I think I like the fact <clears throat> that you didn't have any, you weren't pretentious about it. You didn't try to make something. You just believe. Just believe. So and that's where belief has to come from. Yes. It don't come from like let me just screw this together and screw that together and screw that together. No, belief had to come. See, I believed. Okay. That God was bigger than my diagnosis. Ah. I, like I believed that He was bigger mm. than the. medical condition I was right. diagnosed with, right. what was physically happening to mm -hmm. me, which was out of control. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was something fearful. I would fear going to sleep because I'd have seizures in my sleep. Yeah, that's there are some people walk around and they can fall out and have wow. seizures. I would have mine when I sleep, so I would be fearful to go to sleep. Would it be violent convulsions or shaking or anything yes. like that? Yes, oh, wow. yes, yes, yes. You know, back in the biblical days when people were possessed and, and they were yeah. removed, yeah. I, I mean, people could assume, well, maybe he's possessed. Right. Especially when we don't know. Yeah. You know, we're going to talk about that later. because yeah, that's you know, religious I, ignorance. See, that's what I said. How important it is to know the scripture. Because, see, you're going to fall for anything if you don't know the scripture. And that right there uh -huh. was one of the reasons why my father would actually turn to Islam. Ah. Become a Sunni Muslim. Okay. Not nation of Islam. Right, right. An Orthodox Muslim. Wow. Because he went to this Baptist church mm -hmm. that his wife was going mm -hmm. to mm -hmm. to ask the mm -hmm. deacon right. and the minister mm -hmm. questions about right. the Bible right. that they could not answer. And they have men of God. Are you hearing me? Yeah, I'm hearing you clearly. See, they got a title but no anointing. Ooh. Mm -hmm. They got a title mm -hmm. but no knowledge. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Oh, of course. And revelation of that knowledge. Right. Because you right. can have knowledge, right. but you don't have understanding. Right. Just to quote a scripture means nothing. I know you want to wait until we get into that next no, one. No, but no, no, no. I just gonna, had, to, blend I had to share this. Yeah, we're I had to share blend that. this because, see, we can't separate the man from the mission. Right. Because you, you, you're both this. Yes. You're Anthony McFarlane, the man, and you're uh, Anthony McFarlane, the pastor, a godly man. The spirit indwells your body. So how can we separate us? No, you can't separate. We can't separate. Yeah. And, and in fact, that, in fact, we're going to. But at the same time. Go ahead. I am Anthony McFarlane. Right. I am not 
Right. Pastor. Right. I am Anthony McFarland. Right. I just so happened to have a calling as a pastor, right. as an apostle, right. to teach the right. uncompromised Word of God. Do but I'm not really my title. Do people understand that? Do people understand that? Because I know a lot of pastors make a big deal of it. I'm this, I'm that, I'm this, I'm that. What does that mean to people, though? Um, not Those, much or nothing. Okay. I okay. always say this. I tell leaders this all the time. Okay. I deal with a lot of leaders, mm -hmm. that if your title supersedes your touch, mm -hmm. then you're unnecessary in the kingdom of God. Wow, I like that. And a lot of people, they get their identity from their title. Isn't that pride? Most definitely. Yeah, I mean. But, you, but it, it's pride on one hand. Okay. At the same time, it's a lot of insecurity. Ah. Because you don't know who you are in so Christ. So you got to hide behind the title. So you got to hide behind the title. That, ah. I, that's in the spiritual and in the natural. Right. There's right. a lot of people, uh, people watching this program right now. Mm -hmm. You know, your, your boss gets off on right. being the director right. or the VP or the manager exactly. or Mr. Supervisor right. because they have no authority when they go home. Mm -hmm. They have no authority in their own life. They only have authority behind that title, oh, God. behind that badge. That's how you same thing with police officers and right. anybody else. Same thing. You know, it's the yeah. same yeah. thing, that power, you know. It, yeah. And they hide behind that authority makes right. them feel that they're bigger than right. us. When all actuality, right. it's all based and steeped in fear. Wow. You're exactly right. Yeah. You, exa you did a couple of things, and I want to go back because there's two things you said uh, about your grandma. Uh, in the black community, grandma's usually a pretty big thing. Did your yeah. grandma put her hands on you? I mean, not physically, but touch you like, and, and teach you. As in the rap with men, me? That or? Wisdom, that oh, grandma's wisdom. Oh, man. Um, that wisdom we get through that. My, my, my mother's mother, Okay. Uh, which she unfortunately passed when I was about six years old, okay. from walking me to school. Okay. Um, she was like our world because right. she like protected us, she that loved us, yeah. nurtured us, yeah, yeah. I had <coughs> spoiled oh. us, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I had And one. so, you know, I'd get my second grandmother right. when my mother remarried, right. which was my big mama, Betsy right. Taylor in Mississippi, right. uh -huh. and she was opposite of her. Right. She loved you, but mm -hmm. she was hard on mm -hmm. you, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, she would tell me, you know, I remember her telling me, uh, you know, Tony, don't no man, right. you know, walk around smiling and laughing all the time. Wow. You got to be serious. Oh. <laughs> well, <laughs> you yeah. know. She, that, well, see, they put But she had come from a hard us. life in the South, see. Right. Oh. See, she, she was only one step away from mm -hmm. slavery. Mm -hmm. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So, you know, in the South, the culture is just totally different. I grew up there. Because of the experience Ooh. and because of the racism. Mm -hmm. are, are you following Yo, what I'm saying? 100%. And so my, the, watch this. you talking about the eyes of your understanding right. being open. Wow. When I moved to Mississippi. Reality. Woo! Slapped you in the face. Right. Yeah. So whereas, right. you know, uh, when I was a, a kid growing up initially in California, mm -hmm. right. I experienced that racism and stuff like mm -hmm. that. But in the South. Right it's a whole nother face. ball game. Right in your face. It's a whole nother ball game. Well, see, I'm uh, slightly older, and I grew up during the Jim Crow South. So literally, you had to sit in the back of the bus. They had colors only, whites yeah. only. You know, schools were segregated until I graduated from high school. You yeah. Know I, mean? uh, I was there when King got killed in Memphis, you know. Uh, in fact, I was in the march for the garbage scene. I think we took the day out of school. See, I wasn't born yet. I know, I know. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I ain't old enough to be old. <laughs> No, no, no. But anyway, it was a couple of things. In fact, what I wanted to ask you, in fact, that is one of the things I want to get to in addition to your community service kind of uh, attitude. I've known you over the years, and you've always tried to start something, to build something, to draw a community together. How hard is that? Because as I try to do these kind of things, nobody want to do it. Um, it's not easy. I mean, it's like pushing something uphill. What I had to learn is that, you know, when God calls you to do something. Mm -hmm. He'll give you a vision. He gives you vision, right? Mm -hmm. But everybody doesn't necessarily buy into that vision. And everybody's Very not going to necessarily jump on that train. Very few. Uh, but if you're going to be a trailblazer, mm -hmm. if you're going to be a front runner, mm -hmm. forerunner, mm -hmm. um, it can be lonely sometimes. Very much so. Uh, but... We have been able, over 22 years of being here in this community, ministry-wise, mm -hmm. 
to do some things that impact the city. Mm -hmm. um, you know, um, and it wasn't easy. I, right. I think one of the most disappointing things um, is when Christendom, right. church leaders, right. don't come together. Oof. That's one of my pet peeves. Yeah, and so, you know, I, it, I, found it a I found it a little bit easier to get other leaders within the community mm -hmm. to come together. Right, right. And <clears throat> you always have a, a remnant, a few of those, uh, you know, Christian pastors right. that will come and, mm -hmm. and support in some type of way. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it hasn't been an easy assignment. Right. You know. I mean, I did. But a, if it were easy, uh, no, everybody, everybody would be would doing do it. it. Yeah, yeah. I remember I, over the <clears throat> years, uh, I started this, trying to have a men's organization to help men get back on our feet. Let's right. get back in leadership. I tried this, and it, great ideas. You think yeah. everybody would say, hey, yeah, wow, wow, good, good. Yeah. No, 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 no. And then you, uh, you're going, like I said, us as African Americans, how we have been put down. So it's hard for us to get the kind of loans, to get the kind of infrastructure to run a big business. Right. You know? In fact, those are the things that I'd like to see our church tackle this whole system of racism and how we've been put down. And that's not God yeah. that put us down. Right. But we've definitely been put down. Yeah. So how can we Oppression. identify the enemy without being mad and mean? Yeah. And do God's work in a godly way. You know, here's the deal. There's more churches that are doing their part okay. than people believe. Right. Um, because people look at larger ministries mm -hmm. um, as the sum total of the church. Okay. And if we don't see them getting involved mm -hmm. with community ab ab advocacy, mm -hmm. uh, social and uh, addressing social injustice mm -hmm. issues, then we assume the church isn't doing that. Right. When there's a lot of, see the average church is 100, has 100, 200 members. Okay. That's the average church. Average church. Okay. And those, there are church leaders mm -hmm. that are doing their part. Okay. And so we have to be careful how we stereotype every church right. leader just because we don't see mm -hmm. <clears throat> the major leaders, mm -hmm. you know, T.D. Jakes, right, or, right. you know what I'm saying, mm -hmm. Cruffalo, mm -hmm. whoever, right. you know, um, out there in the community mm -hmm. and leading it. And, and, and they should be in some respects. Right. But I think the other thing that people don't understand is that's not everybody's assignment right. to deal with politics. Right, right. That's not everybody's assignment to deal with, you know, law, right, right, justice. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of pastors they just don't know. You know, with the uh, we got about four more minutes in this segment. I, I did want to. I've asked quite a few pastors. Why don't the church deal with the situation of racism? Okay, I mean, so who says the church isn't? See that that's that I, that I'm I'm kind of challenging. Okay, yeah, good, good, good. Because there are churches. That, I've dealt with it. Okay, okay. You follow what I'm saying? Yeah, I've and dealt I, with you're it. a trailblazer. I've been a, 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 a front runner. Right, right. You I know, know that. I know uh, personally When, that you when are. people wasn't coming out, I right. was out there in the street with the people that. on the front line. Personally, I know You that. know what I'm saying? And, and well, I, I guess just, the question was then, how come they are not helping you do what you are doing? Did, did you get like more people excited about what you were Some people are about? fearful. I think some people did get excited because okay. they seen me right. as a leader out there. Right. And so there were more pastors kind of willing to come out right. and be a part. Okay. Um, but again, at the same time, that has to be your lane. Right, right, you right. You know, right. Ne never go where God hasn't called you. Right, right. Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. There were certain prophets that mm -hmm. God called to deal with nations mm -hmm. or to deal with a king. Mm -hmm. He didn't call everybody to deal with a king. Exactly. Are he you didn't following call saying? everybody to be a king. He didn't call everybody to be a king. Right, right. So, you know, I just had uh, uh, someone uh, send me a, 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 a YouTube mm -hmm. video text, mm -hmm. and it was about Roe Ro, Ro v. versus, you yeah. know, Wade, Wade being yeah. re, re, uh -huh. uh, overturned. Yeah. And the whole conversation was about why aren't pastors, right, you know, right. jumping on Same board yeah. and, and uh, you know, singing the praises right. of this thing being overturned. Mm -hmm. And it was a subtle, it was actually, I think, a subtle shot to me, wanting me uh -huh. to, on Sunday, right. address this, talk about this. Mm -hmm. When I have talked about uh, social and, right. and legal issues right. and political issues over the years, I've, I've had forums, the whole nine shots. Mm -hmm. So nobody can say I haven't talked about it. Right. But God didn't get, I wasn't released mm -hmm. to go public and talk, talk right. about it. Right. 
Right. Are, are you following me? Uh, and I'm not going to let nobody condemn me right. or yeah. try to put some guilt on me because I haven't talked about, mm -hmm. you know, that, that, uh, that law being overturned. Well, let me uh, uh, kind of apologize if I misspoke because I, the last thing I want to do is cut down the church because if you cut the legs out of the church, you That's just it. weaken it. That's me? it. So I'm not trying to do that. I'm, I'm like you. I'm kind of like a trailblazer. And I'd be pushing rocks up the hill, push, 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 and don't seem like you get no help, and you push, push, yeah. push. And then at a point, you kind of get frustrated. Yes. You know what I mean? So it's easy to condemn or condone somebody for something because you don't see. But here's the thing. You mentioned it earlier. God gives you a vision. Right. You see it quite clearly. You act upon the vision. Yes. And nobody move at your speed. Right. So then you say, well, maybe God didn't give me the vision. Then you doubt yourself. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then if you ain't strong enough, you quit. That's right. You know what I mean? You so, just said it. That's the process right there. I mean, but like I said, I know a lot of pastors who are almost giving up their ministry because things are so tough right now. Yes. You know, and we'll talk about that in the next segment because we are down to, to one minute here. But uh, uh, tell us about your wife. How she's doing? <clears throat> my wife is doing good. And children. Uh, my kids are doing, doing very well. I'm proud of them. Mm -hmm. um, my wife is preparing for a women's retreat. It's been three years. Mm -hmm. She normally every year hosted a really oh, nice, nice right. uh, women's retreat, mm -hmm. Daughters of Divine Destiny, mm -hmm. DaughtersofDivineDestiny.org. Right, right, right. Um, good, good. And so in Please two weeks, <laughs> they're going to be in Palm Springs okay. for a retreat. She okay. normally does a conference. Right. Uh, but it's been three years. Good, good. You know, so yeah, said, okay, let's do it a little on a smaller scale and mm -hmm. just do a retreat. So, mm -hmm. you know, she has another great speaker and, they're gonna. So she's on purpose. Good. Matter of fact, she's out now preparing for Good. for the Good. women. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, I, I with my wife, a, a lot of us mm -hmm. now that we're kind of at the end of COVID, mm -hmm. people are just trying to navigate and find a new way and right, right. and figure out what's next. You know. Let's do this because we're only down to the last thirty seconds, and uh, I want to kind of pick up from here because. We got to talk about where the church is with the lack of membership coming into the body. In fact, we want to concentrate more on the body of God in our next segment. So, with these last 10 seconds, let's just invite our audience back to it's going to air a week after the first one. Okay. So, we talked I'm about the man. To it. I think you know a little bit about my <coughs> friend here, and we're going to talk about God in our next one. So, thank you, my friend. You're quite welcome. It's All a right. blessing to be on the show with you. Thank you, sir. All right. So, I'll let them close out. We'll just go straight up. You, how's your tablet? Good. Okay. Now, we, so the whole next one. In fact, they run it quite a few. You want, you you want me to change shirts, or you want me to yeah. keep this? Uh, it's up to you. Would you like to change shirts? No, I mean I'm fine. If you want to.